African American life in the 1920s can be seen as really highs and lows. Uh, we'll not talk about the lows right now. That would be the sharecropping that's going on in the South and, and the red summer of 1919 and the other uh, tragedies that are happening. So let's talk about some of the good things for right now. Uh, that's the Great Migration is continuing. Uh, this is going to lead to a lot of those tensions, but the Great Migration is the opportunity that many of the Black community in the South are looking for to escape that sharecropping bondage. Uh, they're going to northern cities, and they're uh, mostly moving to Black neighborhoods in the north. Uh, for example, Harlem in New York City is going to be one of the most famous of these uh, Black ethnic neighborhoods. Uh, there's more opportunities there. There's jobs. There's opportunities for higher education. Also important is the politics, because when they move to these northern cities, they're also moving to states with more electoral votes, which means their voice is going to be uh, more listened to in the political spectrum. The NAACP is formed in 1910. This is going to become an important organization, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Uh, it's important because they're going to offer legal challenges to uh, the Jim Crow society, right? These uh, issues of segregation. Um, the NAACP is going to be important uh, going forward, even up, in, well, even to the modern era. But uh, they're going to be one of the groups that is pushing the Brown versus Board of Education decision, which is going to end uh, legal segregation throughout the country. This is the time of the Harlem Renaissance, right? So. Uh, African Americans are moving from the South, they're moving up into these Northern Black neighborhoods. They're uh, interacting with each other for the first time without the fear of, say, Jim Crow lynching uh, hanging over their heads. Uh, there's a growing middle class in these neighborhoods, and there's more opportunity to invest in the arts and culture and, and such. Um, jazz becomes one of the first important elements of the Harlem Renaissance and of uh, the national Black culture that's emerging. Uh, it's also helping to gain some white acceptance throughout the country. Um, middle class and uh, white, the white middle class and upper class white population are uh, lashing on to jazz and they accept it. They, they want to go to the dance clubs. They want to do the fun new dances, uh, though that doesn't mean that jazz is accepted by everybody. Uh, large groups of the country uh, were calling it uh, the devil's music. So not everybody accepted it, but it's a start. And we can even see today how music is uh, sometimes both used to build bridges and is sometimes appropriated by white artists to uh, make money. Um, okay, moving on though. The Harlem Renaissance is started there because it's a cultural capital, right? A lot of the important artists are moving there. There's a growing middle class. There's money to invest in the arts. What the Harlem Renaissance is known for is investigating what it means to be black in America, especially in the 1920s. Um, the freedom that they are finding there, um, they're investigating uh, what their role should be in society. Langston Hughes becomes famous as a poet when he wrote his uh, poem, uh, I Too Am America, uh, where he says that uh, essentially, you've kept me subjugated. Uh, my culture is growing. I'm, I'm learning and uh, we are growing strong and eventually we are going to be equal as well. So you can see ties back to the 1880s and, and Booker T. Washington and, and W.B. Du Bois and, and Ida B. Wells and those other civil rights leaders here as well.